G'day and welcome back. Today I've got this Healing Bakelite radio. It's a Model 501E and I think it's made in about 1946. This is a very solidly made radio. The Bakelite's really thick and uh, around the back here, very thick. And the case is in really good condition. I can't find any cracks so far. There's four knobs on the front. I'm not sure what they're for. It's not short wave. So tone and volume on one side. This is supposed to have a switch. No, it doesn't. Supposed to have a power switch on this. And that one's tuning. I can't read that one. Oh, that says switch. Oh, yeah. I can just see it. Oh, that's a... Oh, okay. So that's an on-off switch. That's pretty unusual on Australian radios, particularly this era. They didn't generally put switches on. In the back here, it's a very typical layout for the time. Uh, um, that'll be a 6B8, 6U7, probably a 6B6, a 6V6, and a 5Y3. A nice big roller speaker at the back. It can't see any holes in it. Oh, it's got a date on it. There's the date, 11th of August, 1947. I'll pull it out of the case in a minute. I'll just have a quick look around. A bit of rust on the uh, tuning capacitor there. The transformer's got a cast top on it. That's cast aluminium. Having a look around there, I can see evidence of critters being in here at some point. So this has been stored out in the shed, unfortunately. Anyway, let's pull it out. We'll see what it looks like. I've undone the screws on the bottom and one was very rusty, which makes me wonder if it's had rodents inside it. Let's see if it'll slide out. I think it will. I've taken the speaker wires off. And there it is. Remnants of a rodent's nest. That's where the rusty screw was, and you can see that lower support's rusty as well. This is interesting. Somebody's been in here in the last 50 odd years or so and recapped it. I think these caps here sort of are from the 70s. And it's got Phillips mustard caps in it. And look, new resistors. Yeah, so this has been worked on recently. Well, relatively recently. Uh, there's more new stuff there. Luckily the mice haven't touched the choke there. That's good news. See if I can see the back there. No, it's intact. They haven't eaten it. Unusual. And the choke says 12th of, it looks like December maybe, 1947. Here's that support, and you can see it's got heavy layers of rust there. I'll just take those off, sandblast them, and re-protect them. Here's the power cord, and I can't use that. I'll tack in a new one, and I'll see if this is going to work. While I take the speaker off, I'll just tell you the backstory of the radio. Uh, I came from Melbourne originally, and every year we go down and visit relatives. We usually stay with my sister-in-law. She's down on the Bayside suburbs there, so we usually stay with her for a few days. And last year... 2022 we uh, managed to pick this radio up we took it back to her house and I put it on the sideboard next to the entrance to the house and it looked so good <laughs> that I thought I'll do this up and I'll take it down we're going down again in a few weeks I'll take it down and she can have it and put it on a sideboard so so I'm doing this for her so she's a lovely woman and she looks after us every time we come down so, so I'm very happy to give her the radio I think it'll look terrific in her house I think you'll appreciate it too. All right, let's see what the speaker looks like. Wow, that's perfect. It's it's uh, pristine. Lost a little color, but um, perfect condition. All right, I'm all set up. I've got an antenna on it. I've got the speaker connected now. Uh, I've selected to the dim bulb position. I've got 234 volts there. Watch the glow. It comes on bright absolutely nothing there i can just see it glowing so it's looking good got a couple of lights on the front i think this will work i don't think it was put out in the shed because it didn't work i think it put out there because of that new fangled fm or something like that just, uh, there it is there look it's working <laughs> So uh, I think that was tone, wasn't it? I can't move it. Ooh. Alright, put a knob on there. Oh, there it goes. And that's working, so the capacitors are probably good there. Uh, that was the on off switch. Yeah. And that works, I checked that. Volume. Bit scratchy. Not too bad though. This is working perfectly. There's not even any um, garbled sand or anything. It's clear. 
Yeah, it's great. I'll turn the speaker over, it'll sound a bit better. But I can't hear any hum. There's no hum, so the filters are working alright. In the market for race number four. Ascot in four minutes, it's race two, number five, Mountain Ash two. Absolutely clear. So, what to do? Um, it just needs cleaning up and making it look nice. I'm not going to go over the top with this one, although I will get rid of any rusty areas. I'll probably clean this transformer top up as well. So, I'll try and get the rust off here and these rusty goat shields. Somebody contacted me the other day and said, What's a goat shield? All I can find is was something to stop the goats eating your plants or something. Anyway, that's a goat shield. They're made by goat in America or New York, actually. I've just realised there's no dial pointer here, so I'll have to make one, which is a nuisance. I'll take this front cover off as well. It's got some nasty corrosion going on down there. It's aluminium, so I'll treat all that and probably put another coat of paint on it. Now, these have got to be the original lamps. Look at the size of them compared to a modern one. So they're quite a bit smaller. Just looking here, it's working at 194 volts, 20 nine watts i'll go to full power i think we'll be okay yeah, it might be a bit high it may be pulling a bit too much there 53 watts might be a bit high from go billet on the rails and last is mr mount walker only about five from the leader well i've just let it run for a few seconds and it's dropping it down now so it's probably reforming those capacitors so whatever's wrong with it it's not enough to stop it working and uh, it's working really well I guess the next step is to remove all the gear I've got to treat. Um, I'll probably do this transformer here. I'll see what I have to do with this one and uh, change some capacitors. So I'll do all that and then work out what I'm going to do with the rest of it. I've taken off most that I want to from here. Uh, it's over here. Something that was interesting. They've put a scale up the top here for the serviceman, the glasses mounted in the case. So it can be aligned while it's out of the case. Now another thing I'd like to do before I take it outside the tuning capacitor is in pretty poor condition and the rubber grommets need to be replaced anyway. So, so I think I'll take it out. It's only got a couple of wires here, three screws on the bottom. There's another wire at the back and it'll come away easily. Now, another healing idea was to use rubber for the tuning spindle. So this one's, although it's still there, it's not in really good condition. I'll have a look and see what I can do with that. Maybe have to come up with another idea. But anyway, I'll take this out. I'll come back and we'll head off to the workshop. I have all this out in the workshop now. These items here are going to go in the media blaster. This is going to be paint stripped. And this here, I'll clean it off. I'll see what I need to do there. Uh, it may just, you know, clean up with a bit of water and a bit of soap perhaps. So I'll see how that goes. I said I was going to paint strip that, but I may not need to. I can just rub that back, I think. And I'll fix this corrosion down the corner. Give it a coat of paint. I think that'll be all right. And some fairly coarse sandpaper here. Um, just clean this up. Uh, so that's coming up okay. Yeah, I don't I don't think I need to paint strip it. Alright, I've done all that, I've got all that corrosion off. I will treat it with a bit of vinegar, hit it with some etch primer. I will rub this back here with I've got a bit of scotch right here, so I'll use that. And uh, that, that'll key it up enough for me to put another coat of paint on. Now providing the paint doesn't lift when I put the new paint on, uh, I'll just leave it like that. I've finished cleaning that up. I've given it a coat of etch primer, so I'll let that dry. Now while that's drying, I'm going to throw these in the media blaster. These are cleaned up surprisingly well. I'll put some zinc paint on these two guys here. This one I'm going to put a bit of clear coat on. I didn't expect it to come up as good as it has, so a bit of clear coat that will protect it for the future. Alright, the next thing to do is the tuner. I'm going to sandblast this top area here. I'll get this off first. I'll have to get this C-clip out. It's not too bad. Need to bend it enough so I can get a screwdriver in there. Alright, there it goes. If I undo these two screws, it all should come apart. Take the drive pulley off. I'll only do this heavy rust here in the media blaster. The rest of it I don't want to touch. I just want to keep it reasonably natural. That's got rid of that rust in there. That's looking much better. I'm not going to do anything else with it. I'll put a bit of clear coat over to stop it rusting again. 
Uh, I just got it slightly bent in, but uh, that's okay. I'll fix that up. Apart from that, it's good. I will give it a clean, clean out the bearings in here. I re-grease those. Drop of oil in the thrust end bearing here. And that's pretty much ready to go back. The next thing to worry about is the rubber drive for the dial string. I initially thought that groove was for the string, but of course it's where the string is actually worn a groove into the rubber. This should be straight along there like a cotton reel. So I considered using two part rubber mixtures, and then I thought 3D rubber printing filament. Uh, but what I think I might do is just do a 3D printed one of these and see how it goes. If it doesn't work I can turn one up out of aluminium on my lathe. So I'll go and design this thing on my computer and we'll print it out. I've designed the bobbin in Tinkercad. I'll download it and send it off to the printer. Time to clean this chassis up. I think it will pretty much just brush off. So yeah, it's just got a thick layer of dirt. I'll try some carby cleaner on it, see if that cleans it up. I'll block those off because if the carby cleaner gets on the parts inside, it kind of takes the markings off them. I've covered those two big holes there. Uh, they're fridge magnets, of course it's an aluminium chassis, but they're being held in by some wires and stuff. Before I try and clean it, I'll put a mask on and blow all this dust away. That's cleaned up most of it. Uh, they've marked the valve numbers here, so I'm going to try and keep those. So I'll keep the uh, carby cleaner away from there. I'll just try a little bit here, see what happens. That's probably okay. It's got some corrosion in there. I'll try a little bit of gumption on here. It's a like vim or something like that, if you like. This is under the uh, tuning capacitor, so if it makes a mess of it, I'll, you won't be able to see it anyway. All right, sit back and relax. I'll clean all this up, and I'll come back when it's finished. I finished cleaning the chassis, I'm pretty happy with it, it's, it's okay, a lot of bits of corrosion, but I wasn't going for brand new. I also cleaned the earth and the antenna connections here, so they look pretty good. While I was cleaning this, the printer finished off my little spool here, and that should fit in there, it should be a tight fit. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. So I'll press it on and hopefully it'll work. I'll use my drill press to press it in. Ooh, it's tight. <laughs> I've put it on a socket to let the shaft go through and I'm going to press it up to where that tape is. Nice. Got one end there and the other end and hopefully, yeah. All right. I'll mount this on the capacitor and see if it works. I, it hopefully won't slip. I've had these goat cans soaking in a bit of um, metal rescue for a few days. Uh, we'll see how they come up. Yeah, I'll go and run them under a tap, see if they'll clean up or not. There they are. I'm not terribly happy with them. They look awful. So I'm not sure. It's probably my fault. I actually stacked them together in the bag. I didn't mean to, but they ended up doing that. So I think maybe they've stained each other. Anyway, I'll think of something. I'll try and make them look a bit better than that. I have new ones of these, but I don't want to use them because they'll might match the rest of the set. I also use Metal Rescue on the speaker back here. It's just the top that's got rust on it where the dust has settled and it's it's not going to work. I mean it's cleaned it off but it's 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 too deeply pitted. So what I think I'll do with that is I'll, I'll just steel wool it. I'll put some clear coat over it to just preserve that look. Uh, I won't try and paint it. It'll look out of place. I'll see what I can do with this goat shield. I've been playing around with it a bit. It's called Monument, this paint, and I thought I'll just spray it on a rag and kind of wipe it on so it didn't paint it but kind of coloured it. If that makes any sense. Yeah. And I tried it on another one, but the other one didn't have anywhere near as much um, this white damage to it. So it's actually colouring it pretty good, but it's not covering that. So it looks like I'll have to bite the bullet. I will give them a coat of this paint. It's a pretty close match to what the original goat cans were. I do have to make sure I've got a ground area here somewhere, so I'll have to scrape a bit off eventually. I'll just give it a really thin coat, perhaps. I 
I'm not totally sold on that. Maybe I'll let it tack off and then wipe it off again. I don't know. I'll work on it. Well, while I've been cleaning everything, I've been painting, of course. These have been galvanised. They're ready to go back. I have this. I've painted one side of it, and I'm just going to paint the other side. I've used a paint called Hog Bristle, and that's uh, Dulux, I think. Yeah. So that's a pretty close match to what was on there. While that dries, I'll go and start assembling the radio. I'll just retract that, I won't take it in yet. I want to paint the transformer. So I've assembled it again and cleaned up all the uh, laminations there and it's ready to put a clear coat on it. I'll use a bit of this rust guard, it's okay to put it on with a little bit of light rust and it should protect it in the future. That should protect it for a while, so I, I should have painted it red. Nah, maybe he's going to paint them red. I'll let that dry. I'll go and have some lunch. I have the chassis inside. I'm going to replace these two capacitors. Uh, there's another paper one there. I'm not sure what that's doing. There's one up here. This is a electrolytic, and it's the bypass cap for the 6V6 cathode. There's the two filter caps there, C12 and C16. Uh, C12 is 8 and 16 is 16 all right here's the bypass cap for the 6v6 and that's c21 um, 21 25 uf at 40 volts so that's the first one and that should be 8 at 16 and that one's 16 that's correct that should be 16. i've managed to get a 10 microfarad for that one and this one is uh 16 so that's correct for that one and i have a 25 microfarad by 50 volt to replace this bypass cap down the back here. Uh, when I was cleaning this, I saw a black Phillips, I think they are, capacitor, and they're always crook. And I came inside and I can't find it, but I looked under here, and there it is hiding in here. Now these always fail, I'm not sure what it's doing. Anyway, I'll tell you about this output transformer. I'll remove it so I can get to that black capacitor underneath. But these are a bit odd in as much as they are connected to the B+. So this transformer has B plus on the case while the radio is operating. So if you touch it while the radio is operating, you'll get a bit of a nasty shock. There's the black capacitor and that looks nasty. Maybe the last guy didn't see that either. Here's the underside of the choke that you couldn't see before. Uh, this black wire has B plus on it from the first smoothing cap. Goes through this choke, goes back onto somewhere else under the supply and it's grounded here. You can see it grounded to this case. So this has B plus on it. On other healing radios I've seen, they've put a little notice on there saying caution, you know, it's active or whatever it said, but nothing on this one. I might make a little text and note on the side of it here so you can see it for the next block. Just a quick look at the schematic. There's L5, that's the choke, and you can see that the laminations there are connected back onto the B plus line. I trace that black crumbly capacitor, and it's this one here between the plate and the screen. And that's C22, so it'd be a 0.005 or something. Uh, C22, where is it? There it is 0.005, 400 volts. So I'll change that. Uh, as usual, I'll change those, come back, and we'll have a look at them. I've replaced those two capacitors. I also replaced the main filter capacitors while I was there. I also tested that resistor. It's perfect. I can remount this transformer now. The reason they've connected the transformer to B plus is so that there's no potential between the winding and the core, so they minimise the chance of corrosion in the windings. Now this crusty capacitor here, I'll measure it. It's supposed to be 0.005. Uh, so if we put it on nanofarads, it should be five nanofarads. So that's 14. So that's gone up. I'll hit it with a mega. I have my mega here. Let's just see what we get. A good one would be infinity. Uh, power, what I put on 250. And see what we get. 0.4 meg. So what's that? 400k. So that's a 400k resistor. So this is the same capacitor as I fitted. And it should be just not move. Yeah. So that's completely blocked DC. I'll go to 1000. Yeah, there's nothing there. So as far as it's concerned, it's an open circuit. I will check a few resistors as I go around, but I'll just do a couple to see where we are. These big ones here usually go high. If we use the code BED to work out the resistor value, 
B is uh, for the body, so that's red. E is for the end, so that's black. And the dot, which is, this is a stripe, but it's a dot, is uh, green. So any green is going to be a meg. Red's two, zero, so it's two meg. So what have we got? Uh, 2.8. <laughs> okay, so that's gone high. Now this one is red, black, and I think that's orange. I think it is. So that's 20k. And it's coming out at 19k, so that's okay. I have two resistors in parallel. You've got to try and work that out. That one's yellow, that one's blue, so that's six, that's four. That black is zero, orange is three, so that's uh, four, zero, so 40k. And this one's six, so that's 60k. Now parallel, calculate the parallels, you've got to multiply the two together. So say six and four, that'll be uh, uh, 24, then you divide it by the total of the two, so that's 10, so it should be 2.4, 4. so it's, uh, it should be 24k. Ugh. I think I've done my head in there, so I'll put that on there, and we've got 35. Uh, now that's going to pin one, two, three. This pin that's a screen of the IF amp. So there's the IF amplifier, the 6U7. That's the screen there. And it's going over there. There's the resistor there. So that'll be it, R3. Now I said it should have been 24. Where are we? Oh gosh, I can't find it. R3, 25. Okay, 25,000. So that one's out, or those two are out. All right, um, well, I'll change that. I think that one was wrong. There's a few down here as well, so when I undo this capacitor, I'll check those as well. Okay, leave it with me. I'll just go through and change these resistors as required. I'll come back and we'll have a look at the casualty list. Well, there's the casualty list. There's the capacitors I said I was going to change. A few more resistors showed up as being duds. This one's 20, I think, 20 ohms, and it was reading 50-odd. So that's the resistors and the capacitors done. I need to put in the tuning capacitor. The capacitor is ready to go in. I did cover those with a rust resistant clear coat and the tuning dial is on there, the tuning shaft. I have everything I need here. There's some new grommets as well. I'm putting the rubbers in the holes, but these rubbers are slightly larger than the original and it's quite a chore to try and get them in. So I won't bore you to death while I struggle with these. Uh, I did get one in down the other side. So it will go in, but this takes a couple of minutes. So I'll just, just let me do this. I'll come back when I get the three of them in. I eventually got the rubbers in. It was not easy. It was just too hard to do it with the camera in the way. And I have the screw ready here. It's got a bit of phenolic on the bottom. There's the spacer. So that goes in there. And there's a thick bit of phenolic and that tiny bit of screw hanging out goes in there. So I'll screw that one in. Just leave it loose. Here's the uh, second one here. It's a bit hard to get to. All right. So I'll screw that up from the bottom. Alright, I got that second one in. And I'm just trying to get this third one in. Not easy. I think that's about right. So I'll get underneath and screw it in from the bottom. There goes the screw. I'll go in from here. I'll drop that in there. The little washer's held by the capacitor on the other side. And I should be able to get that in there. There it goes. All right, that's caught. I'll tighten those three screws up. I've tightened the screws up. I just need to solder these two uh, wires on here. Okay, they're done. There's another wire on the other side. This is the rotor grounding wire, so it just has a little screw in there. There we go. I'll flip this over, put the nut on, and that's the capacitor remounted. Uh, the next thing to do is put this light box on. So I'll just do that. It's only got the nuts holding it on there. I'll do that. I'll come back when it's finished. I mounted the light box, as I said, and only took the three nuts there. I'm going to replace the grommets on these uh, light sockets. So I've got some new ones here. And I was thinking of using the original bulbs. I like the look of them. This one's black, the other one's clear, so maybe they've changed one. 
but I think these must run on a reduced voltage because they would have burnt out years ago otherwise. I normally change these but I'm just a little bit keen to keep the originals in there and the clear one I'll put in this end for no reason. All right. So now I can do the dial string and I've been looking forward to doing this. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. That'll be the end of part one and we'll have part two next week and we'll see if I can maintain my sanity during a restring. Also I'll clean up the case. It develops a small fault which I track down, put it all together and see how nice this radio looks. So I hope you enjoyed part one and I hope you can join me next week for part two of my healing 501E radio adventure.